up Black Tree TV and happy award season. I'm Alex Hudgens here in the tree house and we have a very special treat for you today. We have got two of the best critics in the biz, Sean Edwards, Wilson Morales, and they're going to go head to head talking about Oscar nominations. So y'all, this year, controversy all over the place. We've taken to Twitter. The trolls are out and about. So tell me, let's start, let's start with best picture. What do you think about the nominations? Snubs, your favorites? Well, there were a, the best pictures are what people thought it was going to be. You got Selma in there, you got American Sniper, you got Birdman. Uh, I think the controversy stands from the lack of nominations that Selma got overall into, as opposed to the rest of the films, which each got over four nominations. Mm -hmm. So that's where the snub comes in as far as the pictures are concerned. I just think overall the Oscars are always misguided. I, I don't care one bit about the Academy Awards because there's a big divide between what critics like, what members of the Academy like, and what the general public likes. I mean, if you really want to be honest, if you're talking best picture for 2014, there were eight okay average movies nominated, but they left out some biggie movies like, you know, Guardians of the Galaxy was a great movie as well written, it was entertaining. I would have loved to see Guardians of the Galaxy get a nomination. Mm -hmm. In terms of diversity, I thought there were some other movies that were, were a little more bold and daring that deserved more recognition. I don't know what the heck happened to get on up. Still one of my favorite movies of the year, which got no love. I know people didn't like the way it was executed, but I st still thought overall it was it was just a fantastic, well done movie. And the Lego movie, which didn't even get nominated for best animated feature, was actually one of the best movies of the year. I think that should have been noted because of the originality, the creativity. And then my favorite movie of the year, which didn't get nominated, was Gone Girl, which was one of the most entertaining, well done. It was salaciously entertaining terrific ensemble and one heck of a directing job by David Fincher which got no love the screenplay got no love so I think overall people are a little suspicious about the choices because out of the eight movies nominated this year very few have been seen by the general public because they got super low box office except for American Sniper which took off after the nominations were announced so a lot of people were at home scratching their heads when they read off the list of the names of the eight movies that were nominated and of course one of my faves of that eight was Selma which got a best picture and the best song. And everybody knows best song is one of the weakest categories of the Academy. So it looks like it was like an act of tokenism. So that kind of like set off the firestorm for the Oscars So White hashtag campaign and had a lot of people up in arms about the lack of diversity. But I thought Simmel was a strong movie that deserved more accolades in the lower tier categories and maybe a couple of the acting categories. So I think overall it's a weak list of eight movies and I hope the TV ratings sink. And how does that happen, though? Like, what? Who is the Academy? What's happening that these entertaining no, films? I don't know the it's numbers like it's accurately. It's the boring but ones that they get, say you that know. Uh, over seventy percent of the no, over seventy percent of the Academy, 90. ninety percent of the Academy are white. Seventy-seven, 77 percent are male, uh, and there's like less than fifteen percent minorities included in as far as the voting period. So, and there are over maybe the average age of the Academy members is over 50 years old. So they're not, so they're not seeing these movies like Lego movies or who knows what is it that, that's appealing to them as far as, you know, making those choices, voting for the young or, you know, a film that resonates towards the younger audience as opposed to, you look at the, the, the films that got nominated, you know, the Grand Budapest, Imitation Game, Theory of Everything. You know, most of those stories are centering on the past, which I thought Selma would have gotten a lot more because it also resonated with the past. Mm -hmm. Different story. And the relevance of well, Selma this year, you know. You could throw all that out the window. Selma wasn't getting any love anyway because here's the deal. 12 Years of Slave won last year. People were like, okay, there's our guilt choice. There was no obligation for anyone to vote for Selma this year. I mean, it, it just totally got like disrespected. And it, it was hard for them to pull that trigger. But I think you've got to revamp the whole system mm -hmm. because the lack of representations was causing like this big divide in the types of movies that are selected to be recognized by the Academy. I mean, you need some younger voters. You know, you need some Hispanic, Asian, mm -hmm. black vote. I mean, you just need to revamp. The whole system needs to be redone. But how do we do that? It's like this you mystery you society. You can't. That's why you room. gotta. You can't. You can't redo it. That's why you gotta go to stuff like the African American Film Critics Awards or the Image Awards or the Hispanic Awards, and you, you celebrate diversity on your own level, mm -hmm. yeah, with your own ceremony. Because the Academy's gonna be whack. It's gonna. St it's been whack. Gonna be whack. That's just the way it is. I don't know. At the same time, you know, this is the game we all decided to play. And granted, as you mentioned, you know, like you can go. It's a game. You know, you know, it's it's always politics. You know, and, and I think part of the reason, as we're talking about Selma and the lack of nominations, 
it's you know people have mentioned it and this is i think the first time that people are talking about screeners and screeners is supposed to be a privileged situation where people who don't get this chance to see all these movies are given the dvds to see ahead of time so they can be remembered come voting time it's and here that, it wasn't about that but in some cases it was because at the end of the day you know you and i are in the business we got movies by thanksgiving we got movies by christmas about that. and for movies that came out early in the year like the grand budapest hotel they came out in february but yet ends up getting more than five nominations you say to yourself okay they sent out those dvds to remind us of how good a movie this is it's not about that i mean you shouldn't you shouldn't have to i mean if, if you're a member of the academy go see the movies when they come out you shouldn't have to wait for a screener it's, it's, it's not and the winner is the best movie that sent the screener out the earliest. Yeah. It is about well, the, the about best. The it's about the best of the best. The politics stuff is whack. I mean, in the story, it's, it's not about screeners. It's not about politics. It shouldn't I mean, we, be we, about, we, 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 but literally, it is, Literally, we could go on and on about this whack situation. I'm just going to say, 2014 was a weak year. I'm so happy it's 2015, and the Academy can kick rocks. We're moving on. Okay, but the show's still going to happen. People are still going to watch it. What wins? No, what wins watching. for Best Picture? I'm not watching. I'm boycotting. I, Wilson, I don't know about him. I believe it's going to be Birdman. Okay. And why is that? Because Boyhood is taken a lot home well, with these the other two, shows. Those are the two films that's going to be really in contention. I think Birdman overall, I think uh, it's a better film. I think when you're watching it, you're watching good performances all around mm -hmm. from Michael Keaton, Emma Stone, uh, Ed Norton. I think, well, Boyhood, <laughs> Boyhood is a great concept. But when it ends, it just ends. And, you know, you're appreciating what happened, yeah. but I think Boyhood, Birdman has a lot more going for it. Yeah, I like Boy. I, I didn't like Boyhood. I like Birdman better than Boyhood. But Birdman's not going to win. Boyhood's not going to win. End of story. American Sniper's going to win. Go Clint Eastwood. That movie's red hot right now. Bradley Cooper. It's going to be the number one film at the box office out of the eight nominated. You heard it here first. American Sniper. American Sniper. Because Boyhood's like reading the yellow pages that people even still do that or like looking at a stack of yearbooks. The movie's whack. It's terrible. No plot. No Them story. Them words. No. Boyhood's awful. I didn't like it. It was boring. American Sniper, that's kind of a dark horse, though. It, it was it's late a long in the game. Shot. It's a long yeah. shot, but I'm, I'm riding on it. Okay. Bed in the house and the farm. All right, we're going to take a break, and when we come back, let's talk about some of the lead nominations. <laughs> 